piece here uh, was inspired by the uh, biblical um, um, writing of uh, Revelations, uh, and it's uh, Revelations 12, which talks about uh, a woman in the sky who is about to give birth to a, a child, who's the Christ child, and um, she has 12 stars uh, around her mm -hmm. head, and uh, there's a half moon below her feet, and this is obviously the Virgin of Guadalupe. But if you look at these images right in here, you'll have the, here again, it's the combination of the farm worker eagle and the beauty in the Guadalupe. Mm -hmm. um, you, the sky was formed by the images of the mm -hmm. farm worker eagle, and then you have the stars within that blank space. So you have the breakup of the sky. And um, it also referred, the, the, uh, the scripture also refers to a seven-headed seven dragon that's about to try to devour her, try to, to mm -hmm. get her. And so you, you have these skulls, you have seven skulls that represent the seven-headed dragon that's about to try to conquer her prior to her escaping. And uh, it's a very interesting story, but that's what influenced me. And when people hear this story, they sort of um, uh, don't like the piece very much. It's, not, it's, not, <laughs> it's sort of a frightening <laughs> painting. Cause, uh, um, and, I re and I call it El Quinto Sol. And um, according to um, the Mayan belief, or the Aztec belief, the, the calendar ends in 2012, and that's where all these planets are get about to line up, and um, um, that's around the corner, so that's what this painting mm -hmm. is a reference to. Now, I want to talk or ask you about your creative process, because you read a passage here in Scripture. Um, do you immediately see something pretty close to this, or is it a, a gradual process of getting to this through, through drawing or painting? It's, it's a gradual process. Um, I'm, I'm influenced by... Um, things that I might read, things that I might see, or people that I might meet. I'm influenced by emotion, um, and I have to allow that emotion to settle prior to me being able to express it visually. Mm -hmm. Okay. When uh, we pull back a little bit, we can see this um, poster of Siqueiros on your wall. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about influences a little bit more. You mentioned Harry Carmian, a, a painter with whom you studied and uh, still very active in the right. scene. Who else has influenced you? Well, several artists, but here again, we go to the old masters, you know, such as Harry, I mean, Harry is always influenced by the old masters of Europe. I'm always influenced by those masters, plus the masters of Mexico. Um, <clears throat> Siquerios, I was able to see his work for the first time in, in L.A. prior to the um, large earthquake that they had in Mexico City. I believe this was back in the uh, 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Six. It was at 86. Was <laughs> okay. Well, they, they had his work out in um, La Casa de la Raza in Los Angeles, and I was able to see an incredible exhibition of his work, which really inspired me, because at that time, I had no, what, I had no um, idea what direction I really wanted to go in with my work. And when I saw the passion that Siquedios had for his culture and, and, his, mm -hmm. and his people, I thought, this is really mm -hmm. neat. This, mm -hmm. is, you know, this is really awesome. And uh, so I was not influenced by his mural that came to Santa Barbara. I was aware of him prior to that mm -hmm. even sure. happening. And the fact that he's always working with uh, different materials is also a great influence to me. I, I'm also experimenting working on painting on old rugs, and, mm -hmm. and this is actually uh, painted on masonite. So I'm always I'm always experimenting with different mediums and uh, uh, different. Uh, uh, materials to work with. Yeah, and as we move over there, we can, this is a, a another series, this is right. from your AOL 10s, is that, that is right? correct, yeah. No, wh why, why an AOL 10? Why not? They, we got to recycle <laughs> them. I mean, people would get upset and throw these in the uh, in the trash bin, but yeah, th these are all AOL 10s, and uh, um, I decided to throw some oil. Here again, it's the influence of retablos, mm -hmm. um, but um, they're also, these are all what I consider conceptual pieces, and these were all, uh, these were all inspired here again by uh, by encounters that I might have had with individuals, and um, I just needed to express myself. And a lot, I, I consider them, I consider these smaller pieces conceptual pieces because if I see something that works, I'll go with a larger interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. There's a painting here over your television set yes, that you're to inspire. There's also a painting <laughs> over my toilet bowl, too. <laughs> what have we got here? This here is a, uh, a painting of the angel that's underneath the beating in the Guadalupe. Okay. And, um, I like to refer to this piece as the piece prior to the connection with the Vidian. Um, and um, I, was, I was inspired to produce this piece after I um, finished the painting that I was commissioned um, by the church of uh, St. Juan Diego. I just felt uh, the subject was important because the Virgin's always getting all the recognition mm -hmm. and, I, and no one ever questions that angel at the bottom and right. I felt it was about time to... Well, that's what so much angel. of your work does, is, is it looks at the person holding up the, uh, you know, the, the person who's getting all the limelight. That's true, that's true. Now, over here we've got a piece that is, it's almost a sculpture, it's so, mm -hmm. so um, thickly made. Talk about this. Um, this is one of my, um, 
my conceptual pieces that I started with, uh, it's one of the earlier pieces, I believe, um, it's, it was 2000 when I painted that. The frame was given to me by a friend of mine in Los Angeles, and um, it was an old wooden frame, and that's all it consisted of, and I just decided to try to work with it. And I'm always intrigued with uh, Mexican foods. My mom brought me up with uh, um, making great Mexican food. She's been an influence on me with my own personal cooking. What we have here is a mocajete, and um, you have the chiles in the bottom inside the mocajete, and you have the rock, the volcanic rock in which you, you a, you're able to mold the, uh, the chili so that we can get some salsa from it. And the rock has the Virgin and the Guadalupe on top. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, here again we have the influence of the religion and the culture. Now, uh, several times I've heard you mention the date in which something was painted. Do you see your work as evolving towards something higher, or is it just different as you move from phase to phase? Um, I just... I just like to keep tabs of the dates just to see the, the mm -hmm. um, pr progress, you know, my progress in, as a painter. Um, I try to experiment with different uh, approaches. I, I get bored real easily if I continue to paint lilies for the rest of my life. So. <laughs> so do you think you're a better painter now than you were 20 years ago, I mean, technically? Um, I wouldn't know if I, I would go with a better. Um, I'm more experienced, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, I've always had difficulties trying to mimic reality, as, as a lot of people mm -hmm. are able to do, uh, people that are good draftsmen. I, I see my, uh, my strong point as just being creative, and uh, that's where I try to focus on mm -hmm. my creativity. Mm -hmm. Look around, there's so much religious imagery, and I know that your work has also been commissioned by several local churches. Um, in that's fact, right. we have a couple of video testimonials from Reverend, Book, Reverend Brooks and Father Kiwis. Let's take a look at those. Uh, I was at the studio where I was uh, editing, and he was working at the studio there, so I came in and I noticed him, and right away um, we had a really nice exchange with each other, and I started calling him Brother Ray, you know, and uh, he was telling me about his work he was doing and showing me different uh, exhibits he was doing, so I would go down and look at his work and everything, and always admired his work he was doing. He seemed to be a very dedicated person to what he's doing, so... You know, and then it's very warm from the heart. You know, he speak to people, he talk to people. And so it was really nice, you know. And I would always tell him that everybody was my friend. Go, have you guys ever been out to dinner? Go, I know. Have you ever been to his house? Like, no. <laughs> but, but, but we were friends. And he was telling me about the work he was doing for the other churches and everything. And he was always telling me, hey, I'm working on a piece for you, you know. And I would tell the church, hey, he's, you know, he's working on it. And then um, the thing that really it seemed like it was a divine intervention where my uncle and my aunt was coming here from Memphis, Tennessee. And they'd never been to California before, the whole 40 years I've been here. And as they was driving up, Brother Ray was walking up with one of the uh, works that he'd finished, you know. And we looked at it and it was a lot supper and I go, oh my God, look at this. Wow, you know, so I go, hey, Uncle, look at this. And you know, I was admiring, and he said, I'll be right back. You know, and then he comes back with the other piece of the resurrection of the Lord. And we just sitting outside, and the people coming by going, Ooh, oh, can I take a picture of that? And so those people was getting pictures of it while we sitting outside talking. So then we came inside with it, and I have a Hispanic church come in. They just really thought, Wow, this is it. You know, really speaks well of it. It's just been a blessing for me here, you know, and I thought the greatest thing was that it was like a divine intervention with my uncle and my aunt coming at it. He's, you know, he comes up with it, with a work of art that, uh, you know, it's just really awesome. While Ray is a parishioner of Our Lady of Sorrows Church, and um, we first met when his daughter was involved in our confirmation program. Some, time, some years ago to repair statues nowadays and so 